So, uh, yeah, so let's uh, start from chapter seven, right? So we looked at chapter six, chapter six, Paul addressing some important issues about uh, illegal you know, court cases and also about uh, sexual immorality, immorality, the seriousness of it. Um, now in chapter seven is continuing to talk about, uh, you know, uh, another uh, topic. If you notice, you know, he, he says, um, now concerning things of which you wrote to me. That's how he starts, right? Chapter seven. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, se several times you will see, you know, now concerning things, now concerning things offered to idols. Chapter eight, if you see, um, eight verse one, he says, now concerning things offered to idols. So he's, uh, uh, so he's referring to um, what the people actually brought you know, they wrote to him and uh, obviously Chloe's household and others um, who wrote to him and asked him these questions. Now we, we want answers, right? Uh, we have come to Christ and uh, we want to live for him. And, uh, you know, these are some challenges. These are some things that we are facing in society, in our own lives. So, um, you know, we, we want some answers. We, we need your help in sorting through these things, right? So um, so they wrote to him, and obviously he's writing back, right? Um, so several things. So he's saying, now concerning this, now concerning, you know, now concerning spiritual gifts, he'll say in verse uh, chapter 12, um, and so on. So, um, and finally, you know, chapter 16 also, he'll say, now concerning the collection for the saints, and so on. So addressing different uh, topics in the letter. Uh, in this episode, right? So now concerning things of which you wrote to me. Okay, so let's read uh, chapter seven. Let's read the first uh, few verses. Now concerning the things of which you wrote to me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. Nevertheless, because of sexual immorality, let each man have his own wife and let each woman have her own husband. Let the husband render to his wife the affection due her and likewise also the wife to her husband. The wife does not have authority over her own body, but the husband does. And likewise, the husband does not have authority over his own body, but the wife does. Do not deprive one another except with consent for a time that you may give yourselves to fasting and prayer and come together again so that Satan does not tempt you because of your lack of self-control. But I say this as a concession, not as a commandment. For I wish that all men were even as myself, but each one has his own gift from God, one in this matter and another in that. But I say to the unmarried and to the widows, it is good for them if they remain even as I am. But if they cannot exercise self-control, let them marry, for it is better to marry than to burn with passion. So here he's talking about marriage. He's addressing... Um, an important aspect of marriage. Um, so you see that, uh, you know, in the Bible, there are no topics which are, you know, which are uh, uh, considered taboo to talk about, to discuss, right? So uh, he's talking about uh, marriage, he's talking about uh, a physical relationship between a husband and a wife uh, in marriage. And uh, and so we see that it's, it's not something that is, um, you know, the problem happens when, the church does not address this, right? The church does not discuss it or teach about it. Then what happens is whatever the media is teaching or whatever the media is shouting, right? Or whatever the popular culture is, is uh, demonstrating is what the, uh, not necessarily the young people, but everyone is what they learn, right? Uh, unconsciously. Or subconsciously, they, that is what they they learn. You know, that's the information that they see, and that's the information that they um, you know uh, they take in and say, okay, marriage should be like this. Uh, they then they say, okay, um, you know, this is how marriage is, or this is how. For example, if you see in the media, um, the, marriage is not really. Uh, you know, in most of the, like, let's say, serials or movies or whatever, marriage is not given importance or marriage is, um, you know, uh, ex you, uh, program, uh, made fun of, right? Um, 
it is it if you if you look at most of the uh, programs or serials or whatever it, it is like living together uh, even without a covenant of marriage is considered okay right and is considered and, and slowly it's keep cre creeping into even the you know some of the indian indian serials and indian the same that living together is fine living together is okay so that's the message that uh, Uh, popular media and uh, popular culture is actually showing the people, right? Telling the young people, hey, this is okay, this is fine. So if the church does not teach and uh, not really condemn, but teach, you know, this is what is given in scripture. And uh, this is how scripture look, how, this is how God looks at marriage. He designed it. So if the church does not teach it, then obviously people will have wrong ideas, will continue to have wrong ideas about marriage, will continue to have wrong ideas about uh, the physical uh, relationship within marriage um, because the church is not teaching it, right? So here, Paul, very clearly, he's, uh, you know, talking about, um, you know, certain uh, certain aspects of marriage, the physical aspect of it, um, and so on, with, with great clarity. Okay, he doesn't hold back any information. He's he's talking about it so that the people will know. Okay, and get uh, an idea about what marriage is all about. Okay, and also the place that uh, sex has within marriage. Right, it's not something that um, uh, you know that need not be talked about, uh, but you know the right place for it in marriage. Okay, so so he's saying you know. Um, it starts by saying, now concerning things of which you wrote to me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. In the sense, he's saying um, it is good that a man does not have a physical relationship you know, or a sexual relationship with a woman. Okay? He's, he's talking, obviously, about uh, um, uh, you know uh, about people who are unmarried and so on. Uh, unmarried. So he's saying it is good not, not to have sexual rela relationship. Nevertheless, because of sexual immorality, okay, so he's saying, you know, there is sexual immorality rampant in the culture. Let a man have his own wife. Let each woman have her own husband. Okay, so um, marriage is, after all, designed by God. So, you know, there is sexual immorality in the, uh, in the culture. So let them, you know, let there be, let them be married. And verse 3 says, let the husband render to his wife the affection that is due her and likewise the wife to her husband. So he's talking, uh, you know, uh, he's talking about the physical relationship in marriage. He's talking about sex in marriage. And he's saying that, first of all, we understand that uh, the, you know, from this verse, we, we see that, you know, it's an it's a expression of affection. Okay. So sex within marriage is an expression of affection. There's nothing to be ashamed of, nothing to you know, look at it as something that is ill or sinful within marriage. So that is first thing that we see. Second thing that we see is it is, uh, it is a responsibility as well. You know, it's an expression of affection. It is a responsibility. It, it's almost like a, a moral duty, right? And it's mutual, you know, it's not like only the husband towards the wife or only, uh, you know, the wife towards the husband. It's a, it's a mutual uh, expression of affection. It's a mutual, uh, uh, you know, responsibility even. And that is how God has designed it, right? So so he, he's saying, um, this is what it is, you know, you, uh, it's an act of affection. It's an act of kindness, and it is also, uh, you know, because we owe the other person, you owe your spouse um, that responsibility of uh, affection. Okay, so, so that's that's the thing. So it's a, it's an, uh, uh, you know, the media will paint it as something, you know, that's uh, uh, something different. Right, it's something that you maybe as a selfish act, but the thing is that it's an it's an expression of affection. Okay, so then verse four um, says the wife does not have authority over her own body, but the husband does, and the husband does not have authority over his own body, but the wife has. Here again, in the context of 
the physical relationship of sex he's saying that you know this is uh, uh, that the whole act of uh, marriage or the whole physical aspect of marriage is uh, you know it is something that is done willingly and not out of compulsion okay so 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 you know look at the way he, uh, verse 4 uh, you know what he says he, the wife does not have authority over her own body but the husband has, does which means that uh, uh, and the other way also right so which which means that um, the uh, the person does not one person does not abuse this particular authority right so I do not have authority over my own body, but my wife does. But uh, you know that's that's what he's saying. And and the wife does not have authority over her own body, but the husband does. Which means that it is something that is willing. This whole act of uh, physical relationship within marriage is something that is willing, uh, done willingly and not abused. Okay, something that is forced, something that is uh, you know there's no abuse and so on because. Um, Paul writes right in 1 Thessalonians 4 that each of you should know how to possess his own vessel in sanctification and honor. Okay, so 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 he's is giving this um, uh, this picture in marriage that 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 it is good. Uh, it is it is an expression of affection. It is uh, uh, a mutual responsibility, and also that it's not something that you force on the other person but it's something that is willing because um, it's not uh, you know something to be abused or something to be uh, uh, you know something to be um, uh, uh, forced on the other person right but it's something to be uh, done willingly right uh, so that's what we see in verse 4 verse 5 that do not deprive one another except with consent for a time that you may give yourselves to fasting and prayer and come together again so that Satan does not tempt you because of your lack of self-control. But I say this as a concession and not as a commandment. So he's, he's suggesting this, uh, something, whatever he's stating, he's saying this not as a commandment, but as a concession, you know, as a suggestion. Um, he's, he's suggesting this. Now, what is he saying? No, let there be, let there be, not too many times of abstinence. Okay, this uh, this physical relationship called sex, which is within marriage, is God designed, um, and uh, so it is to be enjoyed within marriage. And so He's saying, you know, let no one deprive one another. Now, I, I'm sure you've studied in um, you know marriage and family uh, more about this, but the fact is that. Um, one person can manipulate or deprive the other person like as an act of revenge you know uh, and uh, as an act of unforgiveness so he's saying do not deprive one another you know do not hold back uh, from one another except by mutual consent in the sense you know except with consent for a time okay you're saying okay this season um, maybe uh, you know whatever time frame you're going to spend some time in fasting and prayer and, and focus on that and that alone. So, except for, uh, you know, uh, for a, with consent for a time, he says. And, and the reason is this, that when you, when this is used as a weapon and when this is used as a, you know, as a revenge against the other person, depriving other person of the physical relationship, then we are actually giving Satan a foothold okay so he says that very clearly that um, so that satan does not tempt you because of your lack of self-control okay now satan we don't want that in marriage satan coming and tempting and, and creating uh, you know some kind of a confusion there so um you know sometimes uh, uh, uh even this whole thing of abstinence of sex you know it can be seen as a very noble thing right uh, as a as, if you want to be more spiritual then a person should not indulge in you know in sex within marriage okay but the thing is the opposite is what paul is teaching he's saying you know this is a gift from god so you know if you want to spend some time apart because of whatever reason 
maybe you want to pray about fasting, prayer, etc. That's fine. But then you get back because you don't want Satan to tempt you. You don't want Satan to, uh, you know, come between you, right? So uh, he says that. So we we understand. Okay, um, verse seven. For I wish that all men were even as I myself. Um, but each one has his own gift uh, from God, one in this manner and another in that. Um, so, but I say to the unmarried and to the widow, it is good for them if they remain even as I am. Okay, so, um, and then verse 9 says, if they cannot exercise self control, let them marry, for it is better to marry than to burn with passion. Now, now Paul actually is, uh, is giving a recommendation, right? You know, at the time of uh, writing of uh, first corinthians all these epistles you know that paul in his ministry he was single okay now uh, he was not married so um so he is um, he's writing and he's uh, he's telling them you know my recommendation is that you be single like how i am okay and uh, and even uh, in, later he goes on to explain about that, you know, why and so on. He gives some reasons. Um, so, like, even in the, I think even in the second epistle, does he write like that? Um, no, he, he, here, yeah, when he's writing about uh, uh, later about marriage again, he talks about this. Okay, so um, so he's saying, you know, it's it's it'll be it'll it is best if somebody's like this, uh, single like me, but then. Um, he, he he says, if somebody uh, you know, if they do not exercise, if they cannot exercise self control, they feel that they are you know, not strong enough. Then it is better that they marry. Okay, so he says, uh, and he, you know, he, he says that, um, but each one has his own gift from God. He's saying like this singleness even is a gift from God. You know, it's gifted for singleness to be celibate okay? um, so so that he can just focus on ministry and focus on god and not really um, get involved with the domestic kind of you know the other responsibilities and so on okay? but that was but he's saying you know he recognizes that as a gift from god right and uh, so so he says i understand that that you know one people can be gifted in these kind of things so um so that they can remain unmarried and it does not bother them. They can continue to live their lives and uh, you know uh, focus on what they need to do, right? But then um, you know he's saying to the unmarried and to the widows, he's saying you know it is good that um, if they cannot uh, if they cannot exercise self control, then let them get married. Okay, if they cannot remain pure in this area of sexual uh, uh, you know um, sexual if they cannot be uh, sexually pure then it is better that they um, get them better, better that they get married okay so now the thing is we need to understand that um, uh, that is not the only reason for getting married okay because uh, you know some let's say a person is saying okay uh, uh, I cannot control myself therefore I need to get married or um, you know we know when we study about marriage and from several other uh, you know places in scripture we see that uh, uh, like Ephesians 5 and so on so uh, it is not the only reason right for getting married so then if if that is the reason we are getting married then you know then all kinds of other problems uh, come up in marriage so so that is not the thing you know? so uh, a misapplication of this particular verse would be people saying that okay, uh, this is what scripture says. You know, it is better to marry than to burn with passion. So therefore, I'll get married. You know? um, see, that is not the only reason. Okay, uh, and also somebody who is in maybe is in some kind of a bondage of sexual sin, like pornography or you know things, they should not think okay. If I get married, then you know all these things will go away. That's a, that's a wrong thing because. The bondage is because of uh, um, of a stronghold in the mind. Maybe, maybe it's 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 because of some demonic stronghold, you know, demonically energized, right? Therefore, a person could not should not come to a conclusion that marriage will fix this. 
Okay, so that is a misapplication of uh, of that particular verse, right? So, uh, so this is what uh, he says. You know, if uh, if they cannot exercise self control, let them marry. Okay. Now, verse ten. Now, to the married, I command. Okay. Yet not I, but the Lord. So, so he, till now he was talking about, uh, you know, uh, how a person need not be, uh, you know, need not really. Uh, if they are single, it's good for them to remain single, and so on. And now, uh, and also, you know, within marriage, the importance of sexual relationship and and all that. Now, now he's talking to the married um, people, the, the believers, and he's saying, "Now to the married I command, yet not I, but the Lord." Okay, so let's read the first few verses here. Now to the married I command, yet not I, but the Lord. A wife is not to depart from her husband, but even if she does depart, let her remain unmarried or be reconciled to her husband. And a husband is not to divorce his wife but to the rest i not the lord say if any brother has a wife who is not <coughs> sorry if any brother has a wife who does not believe and she is willing to live with him let him not divorce her and a woman who has a husband who does not believe if she is willing if he is willing to live with her let her not divorce him for the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife, and the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband. Otherwise, your children would be unclean, but now they are holy. But if the unbeliever departs, let him depart. A brother or a sister is not under bondage in such cases, but God has called us to peace. For how do you not know O wife, whether you will save your husband, or how do you not know a husband whether you will save your wife? Now, this uh, some very important things that he's again sharing about those who are married. Okay, those who are married, and uh, specifically, he's referring to uh, believers. At, at least one of them is a believer, right? So uh, he's referring to believers. So this is what he says, you know, uh, um, specifically to. Um, uh, uh, the believers where so where both the husband and wife are believers sorry where both the husband and wife are believers is saying now to the married i command yet not i but the lord a wife is not to depart from her husband so that is the thing you know um so don't leave don't abandon don't divorce the wife is not supposed to depart from the husband and if that happens for some reason Okay, so now the thing is, uh, you know, this instruction is both for the wife and for the husband. Right? We need to understand that uh, because marriage is between the husband and the wife, right? So marriage is two two people. So the instruction is that uh, one should not depart from the other, and even if that happens, okay, by chance, you know, if if that happens, if they are separate or if they, are, you know, it's it's not, you know, he's saying that. Uh, this is not God's best, but even if that happens, he's saying that um, you know, let them be reconciled or remain unmarried. Right. So that's one thing. Let them remain unmarried or be reconciled. A husband is not to divorce his wife. Okay. Very clear. So um, the you know. In the Jewish custom, the popular uh, this thing of uh, you know Deuteronomy twenty four one, um, the for any reason you know the Lord Jesus also talks about it in Matthew nineteen. So they would issue a certificate of divorce you know, for. So it was uh, they were not happy. They were not. Uh, they would issue a certificate of divorce. Let's look at Matthew nineteen, where the Lord Jesus also talks about. Um, you know, separation and divorce and so on. Right, Matthew nineteen. Uh, it came to it came to pass when Jesus finished these sayings um, that he departed from Galilee and came to the region of Judea, beyond the Jordan. And great multitudes followed him, and he healed them there. The Pharisees also came to him, testing him and saying to him, "Is it lawful for a man to 
divorce his wife for just any reason. Okay, so the Lord's response to that is this. And he answered and said to them, Have you not read that he who made them at the beginning made them male and female? And said, For this reason a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So then they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let not man separate. Then they ask the question, you know, why did Moses command to give a certificate of divorce? Right? So because that was the Jewish culture, custom, that you give a certificate of divorce and then the, the marriage is, uh, you know, the marriage is dissolved. Right? So the Lord says, because of the hardness of your heart, Moses, Moses, because of the hardness of your hearts, permitted you to divorce your wives. But from the beginning, it was not so. And I say to you, whoever divorces his wife, except for sexual immorality, and marries another, commits adultery. And whoever marries her who was divorced, commits adultery. Okay, And that's when they say, if such, a, if such is the case, then it's better not to marry. So here, um, you know, what is uh, uh, what is the Lord saying? The Lord saying that you know this is God's plan. This is the Father's plan, original intent from the beginning. That separation, divorce, uh, etc., are not part of God's purpose and plan. But does it happen? Yes, it happens. And uh, and the Lord is saying that you know there are there are there are certain scenarios where it is permitted. Right, separation, divorce is permitted, but that is not God's plan from the beginning. Okay, so what is the thing he's saying? You know, except for sexual immorality, that's what the Lord says. Right, uh, if a you know if a, a person divorces except uh, sexual verse nine, Matthew nineteen verse nine, then the person actually is committing adultery. Okay, so he's, this, he's talking about the seriousness of uh, you know marriage and the seriousness of divorce, saying that you you can't you know just because you cannot get along or um, you feel that okay you found someone else who's better looking better you know uh, better than your your husband or better than your wife you know that's no reason to divorce and remarry, right? And Paul. When he's writing to the believers here, he's writing to them because um, uh, the the culture of Corinth was, uh, first of all, you know, uh, because of immorality and so on. Uh, you know, they the church felt that they needed some clarity about this, about marriage, about uh, you know divorce and so on. So, so he is, um, you know, he's writing very clearly that this is what marriage is. And this is what God's heart is. Um, and he, you know, if you verse, if you look at verse ten, um, chapter seven, verse ten, so he's saying, "This is the command." Now to the married, I command, yet not I, but the Lord. Okay, so he's saying it's it's not just my command. I'm writing this, but it's not my just my command, but it's actually the Lord's. Okay, that a husband is not to depart from the. Um, the wife is not to depart from her husband, and so on, right? Um, and then he goes on to say something, um, verse twelve. But to the rest, I, not the Lord, say. Okay, so he's saying, as per, as a person who has the wisdom of God, who has walked with God with all this experience, and whom God has trusted to write two thirds of the, you know, uh, of the uh, New Testament. Right? So the rest, I, you know. I'm writing this. I'm giving my suggestion, but it's not a direct command from the Lord. Okay, so this is what he says: you know, If any brother has a wife who does not believe, and she is willing to live with him, let him not divorce her. Okay, so here is the scenario. What is it? Here, one person is a believer; the other person is not. Okay, and and this is people who are already married. Now we need to understand that people who are already married. Okay, and one of them becomes a believer. Okay, it's not otherwise. It's not like they are not married and then uh, you know one of them is a believer, other one is not. This instruction is not for them. 
okay this instruction is for those who are married and after marriage like both of them were unbelievers when they got married after marriage one of them become a became a becomes a believer okay so it's for such scenario he is writing okay for such a scenario he is writing um uh, let him uh, like if a brother has a wife right so if a brother you have a, uh, you become a believer you have a wife and who does not believe and she is willing to live do not divorce okay so the scenario the 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 challenge was that okay the wife is not believing the husband is a believer now they are having these problems because of that and saying okay uh, divorce is not the answer and the same way the unbelieving husband okay the husband does not believe but the wife is wife has become a believer so he's saying you know that is also not the case for divorce um in verse 14 okay if they are if they are willing to live with them let them live but you know if um uh he's saying you know verse 14 for the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife okay so in which case uh it does this happen when one of them you know becomes a believer they are already married they becomes a believer and they are willing to live you know the the person who is not a believer uh, who is an unbeliever is willing to live with the believer and he says that uh, the unbelieving husband or the unbelieving wife is sanctified okay um is is coming under the sanctification of the believing wife or the husband so what does that mean that doesn't mean that the person becomes saved okay so it doesn't mean the person becomes saved and he also goes on to say you know your your children would be unclean unclean but now they are holy okay so it doesn't become uh, uh, mean that they automatically become saved or righteous right it doesn't it doesn't in any way teach that right so the fact is that they need to make a choice for themselves like every person they need to make a decision for themselves in order to be born again in order to be saved but the fact is that because they are in this marriage relationship they are in this covenant relationship uh, they are uh, you know in a position they are being sanctified they are being set apart because of the uh, believing husband or the believing wife right they are being set apart because of the values of the believing husband and believing wife and he goes on to say that verse 16 how do you know whether you will save your husband how do you know a husband whether you will save your wife now you've given opportunity for them to see your life you're giving an opportunity for them to you know see it closely how you live life as a believer and also to hear the reason for your life the reason why you live such a life so you giving an opportunity for them to hear the gospel as well and to see the gospel at work in your life so here is um, an opportunity for them to be saved okay that you will that is why he says you know you that you will save your husband through your life through the your, you know through the opportunity to share the gospel you will save your husband you will save your wife now verse 15 if the unbeliever departs Okay, let them depart now if the husband is saying that you know unbelieving husband or unbelieving wife they're saying i cannot live with this person who's a believer and they want to go then he's saying you know let them depart you are not under bondage right let them depart uh, in such cases right? god is but god has called us to peace which means that you try your best but if they want to go you know stating all these reasons then let but then from the beginning we know that you know god's best is that uh, uh it is not a command for people to you know be separate or to to be divorced but it's a permission and permission is one sexual immorality the other one is abandonment right so that is the only permission for uh divorce or separation right so uh, so we see this here so the thing is that um, um we should not misapply that verse you know that verse verse 16 uh 
how will you not know a wife whether you will save your husband and how will you not know your husband whether we will save your wife so sometimes people misapply that saying okay i'm a believer i'm not yet married i'm a believer and i want to marry a person who's not a believer so then we forget that other thing that we should not be unequally yoked to a believer an unbeliever and so people say okay based on this verse you know because of who i am because of the fact that i am a believer my unbelieving you know the person whom i'm marrying unbelieving husband or wife will become a believer okay now that is not what this verse is suggesting okay that is not what the what this verse is recommending it is for people who are already in a marriage relationship it is not for people who are going to get married right and uh, and this is not definitely a verse uh, to use uh, to justify getting married to a unbeliever okay so this is not a scripture that you say and so okay this it says in uh, first corinthians 7:16 that the wife will save the husband the husband will save the wife therefore you know i'll get married to this person i know that he or she is an unbeliever but you know, they'll come to know through my life uh, they'll come to know the jesus you know you cannot guarantee that because it's an individual decision it's a person's will they can go through their entire lifetime not receiving jesus right and uh, it will be a lifetime a marriage to be extremely extremely difficult and uh, painful right because painful because you know that okay you're trying your best they're not wanting to come to jesus and and so on right so uh, it's not uh, it's not suggesting that at all okay okay before we go further any questions or any doubts on this you know we talked about marriage we talked about you know uh, just a touched upon uh, divorce etc so any any questions on this um any further questions on this before we go further um okay okay so um so based on this we should be able to understand you know uh we should be able to clear picture of uh, uh you know marriage and uh, and divorce and uh you know we know that um uh maybe you might know of people who are you know who have divorced and remarried and so on um or maybe even in church you know right so uh we should have clarity okay this is what the bible says okay no matter what happens uh this is what the bible says well um yes uh, so so this is what uh, you know you hold on to you and i will hold on to and this is what you and i can share with others as well right um so this is uh, these are the exhortation from scripture uh, about marriage the rightful place of uh, physical relationship in marriage um and uh, you know the the, the rightful play, place for uh, you know how if one person is a believer and in a marriage the other person is not then you know how do you handle that um you know um yes obviously the marriage will be difficult uh, but you know how do you how do you respond to it uh, how, and what decisions do you take beyond that you know all that is very clear in in these uh, verses right okay so let's look at uh, verse 17 uh 17 onwards right but as god has distributed to each one as the lord has called each one so let him walk and so i ordain in all the churches was anyone called while circumcised let him not become uncircumcised was anyone called while uncircumcised let him not be circumcised circumcision is nothing and uncircumcision is nothing but keeping the commandments of god is what matters let each one remain in the same calling in which he was called were you called while a slave do not be concerned about it but if you can be made free rather use it for he who is called in the lord while a slave is the lord's freed man 
Likewise, he who is called while free is Christ's slave. You were bought at a price. Do not become slaves of men. Brethren, let each one remain with God in that state in which he was called. Okay, so here, Paul is, uh, so he's just finished talking about uh, husbands and wives, uh, of which one was a believer, the other one was not, and so on. So here he's presenting in verse 17, um, as God has distributed to each one, let each one walk in uh, and and he's saying this is what I ordain in all the churches. Okay, so what has God distributed? Okay, what has God given and bestowed upon you? You walk accepting, you know that. Okay, uh, verse twenty says, uh, "Let each one remain in the same calling in which he was called." Okay, so you um, apply that in the context of what he is talking about. Okay, in this whole passage, what is he talking about? He's talking about being single, being married, and uh, and so on. So, and also he goes on to explain about social status, whether they were slaves, whether they were free, and so on. So, you, in in putting that together, you see that um, you know if you're married, then you know don't try to become, uh, don't try to divorce. Okay, just because you know you became a believer and your wife is not. Or you, you as a wife, you're a believer, and your husband is not. Don't, don't, you know, don't, don't be concerned about changing that, right? Um, so, or you know, if you're, um, uh, if you are like, you know, in those days they had slaves, and then, so, um, so he's saying, you know, don't be concerned about, uh, you know, becoming free. But if you can be made free, you know, uh, that's fine. But because you were bought, bought by his precious blood, you belong to. Uh, Jesus anyway, and you are free in Christ. So you know, don't be concerned about that. So the same, so what he's saying is that um, you remain in that same thing, right? Uh, and he's also talking about the importance of uh, um, you know what is circumcision, what is uncircumcision. He's saying you know it's 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 nothing, but when it comes to Christ, keeping the commandments of God is what it is. What is matters? You know, the circumcision is a uh, it's a you know, it's it's a it was a practice among the Jews, and it uh, referred to uh, you know the old covenant, and uh, it is nothing, right? And uh, but keeping the commandments of God that is most important. That is what really matters. So, in other words, he was saying, you know, um, um, whether you're single, whether you're married, whether you're you know a slave or free, circumcised, uncircumcised, you know, honor God. Or obey the commandments of God um, just by being who you are. Okay, don't say, okay, I, you know, if I was not married, then I would have served God better. You know, we hear so many people saying, oh, I have so much free time if I was not married, you know, so much of, and out too much responsibilities. I wish I was like that. Like, he's saying, don't. You know, there's no point in talking like that. So you remain in the calling in which you are called, in the, the state in which you are called. And uh, so it is uh, in that context that he's, you know, writing that he's saying, um, uh, you know, so you serve God, you obey the commandments of. <coughs> so sorry. Um, you obey the commandments of God, okay? And uh, it says, um, let one, let each one remain with God in the state in which he was called. So, um, the thing is to remain with Him. The thing is to obey Him, obey His commandments. That's the higher thing. Okay. So then God would lead you, and God would, uh, you know, guide you. So you you remain in the same calling. You remain with God. Okay. You continue with God, right? So verse twenty three, very important. You were bought as a price you were bought at a price now remember that you were purchased you belong to christ you were bought at a price the payment was his precious blood the payment was that sacrifice on the cross so um you know so do not bring yourself to be a, a slave of men okay to be controlled by people 
to be uh, you know manipulated by people don't right you are a slave of christ now now the thing is that you know uh, yes there there is divine order and structure like for example marriage is designed by god it's there's a divine order and he says okay husband be the head of the wife and so on and also in church you know, there's a divine order like uh, there are spiritual leadership elders and so on so god is not saying you know you don't honor that right he's saying don't become slaves of men in the sense don't be uh, you live under the leadership of god however don't <laughs> allow yourself to be wrongly manipulated controlled by people okay um so um, yeah so that is uh, that is what he says yeah okay so so that brings us to the end of this particular um, section you know to verse 24 <laughs> so any questions here um, on this section any questions okay um Okay, so uh, otherwise we'll, we'll move on to the next uh, next section, which is verse 25. The, there he says, you know, uh, read, let's read through that. Now concerning virgins, I have no commandment from the Lord, yet I give judgment as one whom the Lord in his mercy has made trustworthy. I suppose, therefore, that this is good because of the present distress, that it is good for a man to remain as he is. Are you bound to a wife? Do not seek to be loosed. Are you loosed from a wife? Do not seek a wife. But even if you do marry, you have not sinned. And if a virgin marries, she has not sinned. Nevertheless, such will have trouble in the flesh, but I would spare you. Okay. But this I say, brethren, the time is short, so that from now on, even those who have wives should remain as though they had none. Those who weep as though they did not weep. Those who rejoice as though they did not rejoice. Those who buy as though they did not possess, and those who use this world as not misusing it, for the form of this world is passing away. Uh, and then he goes on to say, you know, but I uh, do not want you to be. I want you to be without care, and so on. So we we'll look at that a little later now. So he's talking about unmarried people. He's talk. He's addressing unmarried people now concerning virgins. Okay, so a virgin is an unmarried. Uh, uh, young woman is what is referring to. Um, so uh, this is his recommendation. Okay, so he's saying this is what I give judgment, meaning this is what I have considered. You know, various things, and I'm with the discernment, and I give judgment. I'm I'm giving my recommendation. Now the thing is, uh, it's based on. Uh, He's saying, you know, as one who, who has been made trustworthy, because the Lord in his mercy has made me trustworthy. So I'm giving this suggestion. I, he's saying he's very clear. You know, he's distinguishing between, uh, you know, what is a commandment of the Lord and what is his recommendation, right? It's, so he's really sensitive to the voice of the Holy Spirit in, in doing this. And that's something admirable. Okay. Um, so he's saying, okay, this is what I'm saying. This is what I'm uh, suggesting. It is good because of the present distress. So he's talking about the persecution that was happening in those times, persecution of those times, persecution against the church, against those who are believers. So it's you know he's saying because of present distress is good for a person. It's good for a man to remain as he is. Okay, if you're married, don't seek to be loose. Don't seek to be separate. If you're separate, you know if you are not married, then you don't. You know, don't try to seek a wife, right? Um, so he's, uh, however, he says, even if you do marry, you have not sinned. Okay, understand that. Okay, so um, so the present distress, of course, he's saying, you know, uh, because of uh, the uh, persecution against Christians and so on. And then he says, uh, you know, uh, nevertheless, verse 28, this is the last part, uh, such will have trouble in the flesh, meaning there will be pressures of daily life okay so that is what he's referring to no there'll be pressures there'll be responsibilities um which you don't have to necessarily carry if you are single okay but 
uh, I want you to know that there will be you know, be prepared to face these things. There will be pressures. There will be responsibilities of uh, you know, domestic life, responsibilities of marriage that you need to carry, and you cannot do away with it. Okay. Okay. I think we'll stop here and then continue with um, yeah, verse twenty nine. I guess we'll continue with chapter seven, verse twenty nine. The and then we'll also do chapter eight in the next class. Okay, so we'll uh, we'll stop here and we'll continue next class. Okay, so thank you. Have a great week, weekend. God bless. Thank you, Pastor.